Hi, and welcome along to the first GEG online hangout. We're excited to have you join us, and um, firstly, we'll introduce ourselves and a bit about our community. We'll just wait for a few more people to come along. Um, we'll introduce everybody, talk about what we're kind of going to do tonight, and then get into it. Firstly, a little bit of housekeeping. This Google Hangout is going to be recorded, so you can view it later, either through our Google um, Educators Group online community or on the site. There are a few ways that you can interact with us tonight. You can use the Q&A app, um, app that we will do our best to answer those questions, or we do have a Google Doc ready where we'll put the supporting links, and that's where the agenda was posted. You can go to bit.ly forward slash GEGNZ 30 July, all in lowercase, and that is where the Google Doc is, the agenda. Right, let's get started. We will briefly introduce ourselves, then Rob Clark will discuss what the GEG is all about, um, and Fiona Grant and Rob will then give us some tips around using Google Plus and managing your content. Then Fiona will lead us into where to for our community. Matt Eyes will be the MC for our SmackDown, and Nick and Tim are our Q&A moderators for tonight. And they'll follow up with any questions that we maybe haven't answered. Right, let's get started. I am Amy. I teach in a year two to five class at Hobsonville Point Primary School and became a Google certified teacher last year. Um, over to you, Fiona. Hi, my name's Fiona Grant. Um, I'm currently a facilitator with the Manai Kalani Education Trust. Um, my main role is to support teachers in a digital learning environment who uh, are in their first year. I became a Google Certified Teacher at the um, Google uh, Teacher Academy in Sydney in 2011. Hi, Rob. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, my name's Rob Clark. Um, I'm a former principal, and um, I've just started a company called Learning Architects, um, and I work where leadership, curriculum, and e-learning intersect. Um, while my company's in startup, I'm also doing um, a spot of part-time teaching at Seven Oaks School. I'm teaching Year 9, and um, having a great time doing that. And that's me. Matt, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, yes, yeah. Sorry. Um, oh, um, sorry, there's Nick or Matt. Sorry. <laughs> you go next. You go. Sorry, Matt. OK, thanks, Matt. Um, yeah, I'm Nick Major. I teach at Pakaranga College in Pakaranga. Uh, uh, I teach science, and I'm the head of junior science, and I became a Google T Certified Teacher in Sydney 2013. That's me. Uh, I'll go now. I'm Matt. I'm uh, in uh, Wellington teaching at Amesbury School in a year three to six hub, um, and I was uh, went to the Google Teacher Academy last year in Sydney. Um, that's where I met Amy and Fiona and Nick. Um, so yeah, that's me. Hi guys, I guess that leaves me. Um, my name's Tim Gander, and I teach at Gisborne Boys High School on the delightfully sunny east coast. And um, I'm a Google Education and Trainer, which is slightly different to a Google Certified Trainer, um, sorry, Google for Certified Teacher. And um, I went through a different process with these guys, but I assure you it's still as rigorous. Um, and I teach uh, secondary school PE. And I'll hand back to Amy.
Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to hand back over to Rob, um, who's going to go through a bit um, about the GEG. Is that right, Rob? Is that we're yes. going to next? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, the Google Educator um, community is a worldwide community and um, the, the chapter that has just started in New Zealand has now got, I believe, about 417 uh, members, so thank you for joining us. The vision of the Google Educator community is to, is to learn, share, inspire and empower educators through the use of technology. And so um, I've brought up a... Um, a screen share just showing our site that is dedicated to you guys in New Zealand and so you can get to this site from our Google Educator group um, community, uh, Google Plus community and, um, and vice versa you can link back. So the site has got um, an events page and you will see that's where we will be embedding events as they are streamed and so you'll see that today as well as on our um, page, as well as other sub-pages which um, we'll talk about as we go through. So there's lots of resources that you can check out. Um, but now one of the interesting things about the Google Educator Group community is that it's not just exclusively limited to Google technology. So, um, you know, we're open to other, other things as well. So that's a little bit about the Google Educator Group. Great, thanks Rob. Fiona, are you going to jump in now? Hold on. Okay, thanks Amy. Um, I'm going to talk about a little bit about um, our Google um, Educators community. Um, and just if you're new to um, using uh, Google+, Plus, a little bit about managing um, just the flow of information and your circles. Um, Rob will talk a little bit about settings as well later on. Um, I'm just going to share my screen with you as well. Okay, so looking all right. Um, so when you come into um, your Google, um, into Google Plus, on the left-hand side with the navigation, if you scroll down, you'll see um, the icon for circles labelled people. I really like using this when I'm organising my circles. Um, I'll come into, at the top here, to your circles, and what that will show me is um, everyone that I've actually got in my circles plus a nice little visual down the bottom here of my circles and I like to be I like this because I'm able to um, organize um, people in and out of the different circles as well as add quite easily um, I'm just going thought I'd make a circle here to show you how it works you've got the plus to click you can create a circle and I just realized um, before we started that I didn't actually have a Google uh, a circle set up for Google NZ Leader. So I've named my circle. I can add a person um, because uh, I know that everybody is already in my um, in my in another circle. I can just type in their name, and they should come up. So there's Rob Clark. No, yes, that's you, Amy, Nick. Matt, Matt, and Tim. Okay, and then I can create my circle with those five people in it. Um, I find this a really useful way to um, also to um, to manage when I'm actually sending out um, posts as well. I can decide on who I want to to actually send a post to. So if I come back to my home page. If I'm going to post, I can click here and straight away I can look in the link down the bottom underneath and I can view my circles and choose what groups of people I want to share information to. Okay. 
I'll hand back over to you, Rob. Okay, um, the second part of um, this, this part of the session is looking at um, helping you post easily to our community. And so, um, so Fiona's just shown you how you can control the, the people in your circles, and that's a really, really important um, tip to remember. I'm going to talk briefly about how we're trying to make it easy for you to find things that are of use to you inside um, this community. So we've set this community up to have what's called categories, and if you're a blogger, these are sometimes called labels or tags and it's a similar idea to a hashtag in Twitter. So um, when you make a post and um, when you want to share something, either from the main Google Plus area here or from your um, Google Plus um, share button on the top right of your screen, I'm going to go back to the middle area and I'm going to share a tip um, in that it's easy to put people into circles by dragging them into one another. Um, or into a circle. Better get that right. You can also place a circle inside another circle, which makes life much easier. Okay, and you'll notice when you do a post, you have to select at least one category. Okay, so that's going to go in as apps tips, and I'm going to share it, and then that places it into the community at the top. Now, um, if we look at the, our categories that we've got at the moment, and hopefully I can zoom in here, no. um, you will see that we've got Apps Tips, Chromebooks, and if you click on these actual categories, it actually filters all of the posts. So there's a post that Tim recently put in about um, funding uh, Chromebooks. There's a discussion category, although the entire system works as a discussion. Um, there's a Hangout category, there's an Introduction or a Kia ora, uh, category, and we would love everybody in the community to introduce themselves, please, if they can, as a little practice. There's an Opportunities category, Practice Examples, Q&A, What's New, and Events. Now, if you have a, um, an idea for a better category, or one that we may have missed, we'd love it if you could please suggest that to us and um, we'll include it. So ultimately the community has to work for you, and um, so if you've got good ideas on how we can make it better, we want to know. Thanks. Thanks, Rob. So once you've got um, your categories organised, uh, sorry, your circles organised, a really useful place to go next, and I'll just click back into my Google+, Plus is settings. Um, if you go to the left hand side again with your navigation bar here, scroll down to the bottom and you'll see settings. If you click settings, then loading, loading, loading. Um, through here you can actually personalise the whole setup of your Google Plus, how you are um, actually sharing as well as what kind of information is coming um, through to you um, in terms of uh, from your circles as well as publicly. Um, I think this is a really important um, this is really important to check through this before you actually start um, getting in too much into Google Plus. Otherwise, you'll find that you can be a little bit overwhelmed by all the information coming through. And it's also quite personal to what your interests are. So, for example, you can see here uh, who can send you notifications. There's always a little bit more if you're not sure about what that means. And then you can choose from here what. Um, um, either your circles, anyone, only you, or you can click in and customise, which again opens that little recognisable um, window where you can scroll through and choose from your circles. So it's quite important there to get the circles set up and then come into here and work through on your settings. Um, if you scroll down through here, you'll see that again to the notifications area, this is another area that you could spend a bit of time getting sorted. 
like if somebody mentions me on a post, I've got it set up with an email because I don't always get um, notifications other ways and I like to be able to, if somebody mentions me, to be able to respond, especially if it's a question. So that area um, is worthwhile spending on some time working through and you'll find that again on the left here under settings. Okay. Okay. Um, we're going to share four um, useful extensions with you. Fiona's going to share um, two, and you'll notice that in the um, in the planning document that we have shared with everybody that these are linked for you. So over to you, Fiona. So the the first um, the first I'm going to share. actually Nick um, recommended this one quite a while ago and it's probably one of my favourites. It um, enables me to be able to sometimes you know you're on the go and working through things really quickly and you want to be able to come back and find um, a post. So if I click back into my oops, Google Plus again. And go to my home page. When it's in, when the um, when it's installed, the favourite posts for Google, it actually pops a little star underneath your each of the posts as they come through, and you're able to click that. So there's a post there from Amy. Let's say, for example, I wasn't able to um, read that right then and there. I could click the star, and then later on, I can come back in to my navigation bar on the left and you can see it's added the favourites in here and I click on favourites and then that will bring up anything that I've uh, favourited recently. So you can see there um, an article that was posted. I was really excited to see a lot of um, Google Certified um, Teacher applications come through this afternoon. I haven't had a uh, chance to look at all of these videos so I've favourited those so I'll be able to go and have a look at those later on. Thanks, Rob. Okay, the one that I'm going to share, um, the first one that I'm going to share is called, um, it's not actually a, um, a Google Plus thing, it's actually a, um, it, it adds a bit of functionality to um, your launcher in Google Apps. So I'm just going to share my screen and I'll go back to our community. Um, the one that I'm going to share, it's called Apps Launcher. Can you see my screen? Okay. So this um, Apps Launcher, what it does is it allows you to personalise the Apps Grid, which is the little 3x3 um, three three, um, square that you have at the top of your screen, which is how you generally get to your the core services when you first install Google Apps. Now, some of these are ones that are relevant to my business or um, and so they're kind of boring um, um, but what you can see on my apps launcher is that I've put in um, a shortcut for my Google Plus community, um, MailChimp, um, the link to my online bank and and some others which you know aren't terribly interesting. Now the way to get this is to go into your settings of your of your Chrome browser and from there you go to extensions and you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom and click get more extensions. Okay, that will load and then do a search for apps launcher and it should come up. It's not Okay, now um, it's this one here is called Apps Launcher Customizer for Google. Okay, now it's a really handy little tool because what it does is it allows me to um, personalize and create um, an environment where I can easily, quickly and easily get to um, different tools that I use regularly. Okay, so to configure it, all I do is I click on configure down the bottom 
and I can add in ones that already exist. So there's obviously loads of them, and some of them will be interesting for different people, like you know your bookmarks, depending on how you're using different tools. Most of these tools are, um, a lot of them are Google tools, but some of them are not. But you can also create your own one. Okay, so all that requires is a link. Okay, so you could actually create a link to say your class website, and if you upload an icon of it in this um, icon URL, it will show you a nice little icon. Okay, so um, the icon part is so that's how I basically got. That's why that VNZ icon looks quite ugly because it's a bit stretched. It's just a screenshot. So over to you, Fiona. Thanks, Rob. Okay, um, the next um, little Google Plus um, support tip I'm going to share is called Google Plus notifications. Um, okay, so um, I only have one Google Plus profile, or even despite the fact that I have probably about 10 or 11 GAF accounts, I made a decision early on that I would only join Google Plus with one account. So consequently, if I'm signed into um, any of my accounts that don't use Google Plus, um, the Google Plus notifications um, sits up in the top above my browser window actually on my computer and I'm able to, let me see if I can get it once I've downloaded it, if I can get it up again. Okay, it's sitting up here. Oh no, that's not going to work. That's t uh, that's messy. Sorry. I have to go out of that one. It actually sits up on top at the very top of your window, and if you click the notifications, it's going to. It doesn't matter which GAF account you're in. You're able to um, to see your Google Plus notifications. It's quite handy um, if I'm um, saves me actually having to log or you know switch between users. Okay, um, the second one that I'm going to share is um, I'm going to go over to our shared document that you all have access to. Um, it's called Replies and More. So you'll see in our our document, which I believe is on the um, the Google Educators Group NZ site. Replies and more is really handy. Um, what it does is it allows you to actually add a little um, extra functionality into the commenting area of Google+. And so if I go into our community, and if I want to say reply to um, Amy from this sticky post that's stuck at the top, I can reply just back to Amy, okay? And the other thing that I really like about this particular little extension is that it helps you to integrate other social um, media channels into Google+. So that's a nice little feature because if I know that many, um, I'm certain that many people who are um, joining the Google Educator New Zealand group um, will be using Twitter as well. So I could tweet that post, and what it'll do is it'll connect up with Twitter and do its thing, and off we go. Over to you, Fiona. Thanks, Rob. Um, so the, the next part of the Hangout, um, we are looking at where to for our community. So uh, Rob um, uh, did a brief overview of the, the Google site. And if you can flick into the Google site now, I'll bring it up on the screen share again as well. We've added in um, a page underneath it up here. Underneath events called hosting a gig event. Um, what we're really keen to be able to support you with um, the Google Educators Group is that if you are keen to host and and run an event anywhere 
um, in your lo local community or school um, that you're able to contact us um, for some support around that and um, uh, any of the Google Educator Group leaders will be able to help you. So events could be anything really from um, um, something social, an outdoor event right through to it might be a guest speaker, it might be a more um, workshop related type of professional learning and development, um, it could even be um, a student um, initiated and, and facilitated event. Um, we've got lots of great resources and ideas um, which um, we can help you with. Um, if you come into, into the site onto this page, that gorgeous bunch of Google Certified Teachers there. Underneath um, there's a link through to um, the leaders um, contact details so you're very welcome to direct contact any of us directly or um, there's also a form here which you can complete with your name, Google Plus profile, contact email an approximate date of your event um, doesn't need to be exact. Um, whereabouts you are in New Zealand and just anything else you'd like to add. And what that will do will um, fire through to all of us and we'll be able to um, contact you depending on um, you know, who's available and who's maybe in your local area or who might have specific um, expertise in that area to support you um, with your event. Um, I think that um, Probably that's about it in terms of the events. I might just actually just check in with, um, switch back on here with Amy to see if there's anything you wanted to add to that. Is there anything you wanted to add to that, Amy, about the events? No, that sounds great. Um, and of course, we're here to support you and to help you and um, offer whatever guidance we can. Shall we um, head over to Matt if if you're finished, Fiona? Uh, yep, no, that's great. Thanks, Amy. Y have you finished? <laughs> yes, it's fine. <laughs> right, over to you, Matt. <laughs> yeah, all right, um, I'm here. Um, hey, so um, it's that exciting part of the Hangout now where we have a bit of a smackdown. Um, which is sharing, um, all the people in the, in, in the Hangout are going to share a few quick tips and tricks, um, some googly tips and tricks, um, so it's very exciting stuff. Um, first we have Amy, and Amy is going to be showing us uh, Google Drawing and creating a clickable image, so over to you Amy, and you can go ahead and share your screen. Awesome, thanks Matt. So, um, I see if I can share my screen. Hopefully that is working. I love, um, oh, is that screen sharing? No. Oh, sorry guys. Can you see that now? There you go. Yep. Let's all go. Awesome. Cool. Um, right, so I am such a fan of um, Google Drive. It's a really underutilized tool, and I learned this tip from um, Chris Betcher over in Australia, where he I put the link to his um, video to see how you use it. So um, you can put any image into a Google drawing, and then go over to the polyline, and if you draw around an image, an entire image, you come up with an outline like that and if you go insert a link you can now insert any link and embed that into a site and it can now become a clickable image. So that is my demo. <clears throat> cool, thanks Amy. That's really handy for um for creating um, like a bookmark page almost and sites that for for younger kids that they can just click on the um, the the picture and which will take them to the to the website. So yeah, I've always liked that one. Um, and next, uh, Fiona is going to be um, chatting about uh, Chromecasts, which is pretty cool. So over to you, Fiona. Thanks, Matt. Um, I did was just looking for the. 
Um, I, I popped some links up on the agenda. Were you going to paste those on? I can do that. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, about Chromecasting. Um, I've had a Chromecast um, for a few months now and found it really useful at home for casting from um, both my Mac and my Chromebook um, onto um, this television. I've put two on the um, agenda doc down the bottom. I've put a link through to um, two um, little apps that or extensions that you can add in the Google. Cast extension is what you'll need in your um, in your Chrome um, uh, toolbar to actually cast a Chromecast. But what um, is really useful here, I think, is thinking about um, students with their Chromebooks are able to also cast um, really quickly and easily if you've got a Chromecast set up in your um, in your classroom or learning space. Um, this is um, it sounds quite simple, but I think when we first started with the students on the devices, if we wanted students to to share through um, a, a projector or screen, you know, it was about plugging in and the data projector and things like that. And now, with um, being able to Chromecast, it's a really quick and easy way for them to be able to share, um, you know, on the spot. Um, and I think that there's a lot of um, opportunities there to. Um, support um, ongoing dialogue and discussion in the classroom when something on a small screen can be projected straight away onto a large screen, um, especially reinforcing that idea of the visibility of learning and that um, the, the conversations continue on without people thinking too much about having to crowd around a smaller screen. Um, one of the uh, yesterday I was in a school and a very excited principal shared with me how he's potentially going to be using um, this as well and I've added in the um, on the dock another extension called join tabs so what he has uh, described to me was um, when you start a Google Hangout your Hangout is in a little pop-up window um, so what you can do with this is you can use join when you click join tabs from um, your I'll bring it up so you can see it. Don't know whether it's going to work in in, in this hangout now. I probably don't want to muck it up, but I'll give it a go. Um, up here, so it looks like a kind of a little horseshoe magnet. Can you see that? Nod head if you can. This one up here in the very top right hand corner. And when you click on that, it actually will move your hangout window into a tab which means that you can cast from um, your tab and the potential there to be able to, for example, have a camera set up um, or a phone set up in one area and then be able to cast back to multiple areas. So it might be an event that's happening and you want to cast in or um, you might have uh, be interviewing somebody or a, on a, through a Google Hangout and you want to cast to um, more than one um, location in a, in a learning space. Um, I think it's a lot of potential there to be able to do that really quickly and easily. Um, and the Chromecasts are quite reasonable in cost at the moment. I mean, they're coming through the US. I'm not particularly up on that because I got mine from the US. So somebody else on here might be able to, to tell me what, what's the best way to, to go about buying them now. But um, really something worthwhile and in, in, uh, looking into. Thanks, Fiona. So <clears throat> I don't think they're available in New Zealand yet, are they? No, they're not. Yeah, no, they're not. Right. But yeah. I, I, people aren't having too much problem um, getting hold of them. And when mm. you when you buy them, um, it comes obviously with the US um, power adapter. So yep. you can plug it into the USB on your mm -hmm. screen. Or I just bought a little um, uh, adapter which costs like five dollars to turn it. Uh, you know, so I could plug it into the New Zealand power mm -hmm. source. Yeah, yeah. I got mine from um, uh, through UShop, you know, through uh, I think it was Amazon and uh, New Zealand Post thing, and I got it sent over here. But in uh, um, I use it heaps uh, at school as well, and also in you know kind of everyday life for uh, streaming um, media I acquire to uh, my uh, TV. So yeah, awesome, awesome little device. So thank you. So are you students um, casting from their Chromebook? Um, we haven't done that yet, no, but that's so. No, but that's, that's, yeah. awesome. but that's, yeah. but that's yeah. 
I just think that sometimes you know you, you you want to take advantage of that kind of moment, and if you don't have to be fussing yeah. around with plugs yeah. in and out, and logging in and out and getting on different machines, especially with the Aces because of the they have the HDMI, um, that you know there's huge potential there with, with you know just keeping that conversation going with your Chromecast. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, cool. So I do believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we have Rob next, who's going to be uh, sharing a few search tips and tricks. Um, is that right, Rob? Yes. Okay. okay. Lovely. Um, share my screen. Um, nod intelligently when you can see this. Can you guys see it? Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, the first search tip um, that I want to share tonight is um, how you can change the... Um, I'm quite frequently searching for um, science experiments and um, one of the things that's great about a Google search is that it's very quick obviously but one of the things that's potentially problematic is the huge number of results that you can get and um, certainly as a teacher you know you, we've got a whole range of kids um, with different varying reading abilities in our class. Um, and so the, um, the first tip that I want to share is the ability for us to um, alter the reading level. Okay, so um, what I did there was I clicked on search tools and you'll see that that toggles on or off. And then at the moment it's showing all results from any country and I want to change the reading level. Now, um, some teachers that I was working with uh, recently said, well, does it change it according to the colour wheel um, or to, you know, the reading levels? No, it does not. So, you know, depending on um, what I'm searching for but also um, the audience that I'm searching for, it might be that I want basic, what's deemed as basic reading material or advanced. And so you can see down here it gives you a little graph that shows you where the bulk of the results are coming from. Okay, so that's that's reading level, and that's I find really helpful. Um, the other um, search tip is that you can change your um, the region that you're searching from. Okay, and um, so there's a whole range of if you explore the search tools, there's a whole uh, and play around with these um, different ways of changing location. Um, then that will be really helpful. Um, I noticed the other day my daughter. Um, was searching for, she's doing science badges at school, and she started, uh, she's seven, and so she has started searching by voice. Um, so you'll see, I've just literally searched for what I just said, so I'm going to um, shut up for a second and search for something a bit more intelligent. Science experiments for year nine. Okay, so um, there are some, uh, that's a really useful tool, particularly if you are teaching younger children or children that, um, you know, spelling and um, typing is an issue and you just want to speed the whole process up of getting information. So those are my tips for tonight. Cool, cheers Rob. Um, there's another interesting one just to add to that voice search one is <clears throat> if you've got um, younger kids as well, you can actually say into the Google search uh, how, so if a little kid says, how do you spell, you know, extremely, then it'll actually pop up with something that says extremely, E-X-T-R, like that. So, um, you know, down with dictionaries and we can just all use uh, a voice search as far as I'm concerned. Um, but cool, oh. cheers for that. Hey, can I share one more? Yes. Um, do a search for um, the word timer. So if you want to um, do a timed thing for your class, um, why not do a, um, a countdown? Or if you type the word timer into um, your search bar, you will get a lovely little timer and you can make it go full screen and do a countdown. Okay, so that's, um, I reckon that's really handy. There you go. Done. Yeah, another super handy one. All right, are you sure there's no more? <laughs> not yet. <laughs> All right, lovely. Okay, cool. Um, and next we've got Tim, and Tim is going to um, uh, talk about searching posts in Google+. Hey, guys. Um, just before I start, me and Nick are going through the questions, and if you've got any questions you'd like to 
find the answers out to uh, before the end of the Hangout. Just use that question um, Q&A app, and if you go on your screen to the left-hand side, it will come up underneath the chat and the share screen. Um, and, and through that, you can ask a question. And if you want to plus one a question that someone's already asked, I know if someone's asked if Rob's had his haircut or not, you might want to find out if, you know, if that's happened. Um, just plus one that, and uh, you, hey. you'll, be able to, you'll be able to find out. So uh, hey, here's, yeah, a you, question, here's a question, Tim, yeah. for all the leaders. Do you think we should have a prize for the person that can ask the cheekiest question each time? <laughs> It'll probably involve you, Rob, so I don't mind, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just, just plus one those, those questions anyway, and uh, we'll, get, we'll get through to those just, just towards the end. And it's also great to see how many people are watching and people saying hi from Hamilton and uh, great to see Cheryl from Gisborne as well, so lots of uh, people watching. I'll just share my screen a second and I'll get you to nod your heads encouragingly again. Um, guys, if you can see my screen. Okay, I press the button and it should start to, to share it. Okay, is that is that coming on, guys? Yeah, yeah that's working. Brilliant. Okay, super. So I just had this, um, I was going to talk about something else, but I was, uh, had a few questions last night on Twitter about how you can search posts within uh, Google+, and at any time you can search in Google, obviously Google's a search engine, uh, so it's really powerful on that, but I think it becomes even more powerful when you search within a community that's got a specialism of uh, knowledge and ideas which you want to look for, and for example, our GEG New Zealand community, um, and just below the community, you've got the, the search community, and you can search for topics. So if I wanted to search for something on Chromebooks, I'd type it in, and it would um, come up with everything that anyone's uh, posted about Chromebooks. And Dave's put a post in here, I've put a post in, Alana's put a post in, Justine's put a post in. You can just have a look through um, different people's thoughts and ideas, and you can look at best of or most recent. It also works for uh, people as well. So I know Simon's put some really good posts up on our community, and you can have a look through all the posts that Simon's put in there. And one of Simon's really good posts, which um, inspired me to try something new out, Site Maestro, uh, I found through that, I, I knew he'd put it on there, I couldn't quite remember where it was, and, and I searched for it, and that's something I've been using uh, the last couple of weeks, and I was going to talk about that, but I think hopefully we'll dedicate a bit more time to that next, uh, next Hangout. In an educational context, uh, this is a really powerful tool um, when you start using communities in, in uh, your classes. And here's one I've set up for my level 2 PE class. And we've done a lot of our learning this year online. And it echoes uh, some of what Fiona said to do with making that learning visible and also connectivism and, and supporting each other in their le own learning. And through searching for the students, um, I can see exactly the sort of input they've had and whether they've been uh, showing their own social presence or uh, just sort of skirting around the edges. So it even lists their comments as well and as well as their posts. So I think that's a really, really powerful tool for using communities but also documenting that and uh, finding out what students have done. So uh, yeah, hopefully that's answered some of those questions which were on uh, Twitter last night. There's also one real quick one. I'm going to do a bit of a rock here and, and do two in one. And um, it's something I wish I'd learned years ago. As an avid uh, person who likes plagiarizing off the internet and stealing other people's um, ideas and bits and pieces, if you're copying and pasting um, from websites, here's an article that Dorothy Burt shared uh, today, which was a really interesting read. And um, if I just want to copy some of this text, some of you guys will definitely probably know this, but um, it saved me a lot of time. Just to use Command C, obviously. And if I just copy it into a document, it's going to format it as it was formatted in that original document. I think it was Joseph E. Sands or something like that, one of those fonts. And um, I like to keep things all organized. So I'm going to undo that. And if I just go Command Shift V, oh, hold on. If I go Command Shift V, it's going to um, stick that in. in the font which I have uh, in that original document. So Command Shift V 
inserts the text into the document which matches the formatting in that document. So I found that as a really good quick tool to use. So yeah, Command Shift V instead of Command V, brilliant. I'll, um, oh yeah, that that saves me heaps of time as well. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, sure. So I'll unshare my screen. Is that? I think we've coined a new phrase. Uh, you've coined a new phrase, Tim. They're, they're doing a rob, you know, going on for longer than, longer than. <laughs> okay. Um. So um. I'm up next. Um. And it's just okay. a quick little thing. Um. <laughs> um. So I'll just share my screen. Hopefully everything works here. All right. Um. So this is. I'm going to talk about a page setup in um, a Google Doc. Um. And what you can see now is pretty much the basic A4 layout. Um, and I kind of think this is a bit of a relic of the print age, you know. I mean, if you look to the left and the right of the docks, I mean, look at all this wasted real estate. 90% um, of the time I never even print out a dock, so why which I, want, I, I should be able to use the full length of, the, the full width of the screen. Um, so if you do want to change that, head on over to the file menu and go to page setup. And in this one, you can you can tweak and change uh, a lot of things to get the most out of your space um, in a doc. So I, I always put it on now. Um, my default now is A3, which um, I'll just do that quickly, which um, widens it. See, now there's more, more space to write. Um, and see the cursor there? It, it's about, I think it's set as two centimeters um, from the sides. So again, just to get that little bit more um, space out of your docs, you can change the margins to something uh, something much less, even less than that, if you want to go further out, and then you start start writing closer to the margins. Um, so I use this all the time, actually, um, and I you can do stuff like make it a really small one, like an A5 one. You know, that's even smaller. We used that. The kids were doing some poetry writing, and so they needed uh, you know kind of that more vertical sort of space. Um, and you can also flip it onto landscape, which flips it up. The other way, of course. And the last thing is, this is where you can change the the page color um, of a doc. Um, so whatever it is, you, know, you can uh, change you, the page color. Yeah, have, you lost, so, have you lost your screen sharing? It's Rob here. Uh, yeah, did, 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 did that work? Am I? Am Show I? Us very last bit, Nat, because I think I don't know if it was me, but I think the screen sharing might have kicked okay. out. All right, I'll just quickly. So it was the I think I don't know when it cut out, but uh, can you see it now? Yep. Okay, so this was the changing the changing the color of the the background color of the doc, the whole doc. So file, page setup, uh, page color. You know, change it there. So that was the last little bit. I don't know where it where it ended and where it began, but there you go. So over to one. you. I think it's um, Nick and Tim now with the Q&A app. Yeah, sorry. I, um, I didn't mute my microphone. I disappeared my head underneath the, uh, underneath the table <laughs> but blew my nose. Everyone heard it. <laughs> well, one time you needed to mute your uh, microphone. All right. All good. Yeah. So, right, great. So, um, yeah, I talked about uh, the questions earlier, and I've written a few down, and I know Nick's written a few down as well. So we'll just put them out there, and if any of you guys want to jump in and, and answer them. Um, Justine asked a question about the certified trainer or the certified teacher qualification, and do you need to renew that, or um, what happens after a year? And from a Google educational trainer, I know you have to submit to Google all the training sessions which you do, and you have to show you've done a certain amount of hours over um, a certain amount of months, and that's part of keeping your qualification alive. I'm not sure. Can you guys let us know about the Google um, Teacher Academy and a Google Certified Teacher? Yeah. Um, the Google Certified Teacher application or process, once you've, uh, once you've achieved it, is different to the trainer process. There are similarities. Um, however, um, you're not required as a Google certified teacher to maintain a certain level of what Google call training, um, per se. Um, and um, so that's that's probably the main difference. 
Anyone else want to add to that, Fiona? Or? No. I think probably with the with the Google Certified Teacher, um, it it is kind of up to the individual once you've been through the academy to make sure you um, you know you take advantage of the opportunities that present themselves through the communities. Um, you know you have access to online communities through a Google group. Um, uh, also, there's um, uh, quite a few public and private communities within Google Plus, um, and and just you know just ensuring that when um, uh, the events come around that you're aware and cognizant of them be being there and taking advantage of it. We're hoping too with the with the gig NZ now that we can um, you know offer more opportunities around the country too to um, connect with Google certified teachers because I have. Um, this really good feeling that there's going to be a whole lot more of us pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, although I think they're actually also making it a little bit harder and a bit more, um, the, uh, the, the process is still fairly rigorous, but given that there's more people applying, um, and I think there's been a bit of a spike in the last year, certainly, that may um, get a little bit more um, competitive, I guess. Mm. Even though you don't really necessarily yeah, want really, it to be, you really want it to be. Yeah, oh, I'm just hoping that because it's in Sydney, it's you know, t um, it's an opportunity mm. for Kiwis mm. to take advantage of it. I mean, the Google Edge, um, Google um, Teacher Academies are open around the world for anyone to apply to, but obviously, it's um, when it's close to home, it just helps with the costs. Great. Shall we? Um, th there's a couple more questions, and I think a few that are really important that um, need to be answered. Lisa um, Dylan Roberts asked about: Can you invite people to this hangout? Um, the way it's set up, because it's a hangout on air, the people who are hosting it uh, are doing the talking, and you have to share the link, and it's um, it's streamed live on YouTube and any other sites. So I don't know if you want to talk any more about that, Amy, because I know you set it up and, and put it all together on it. Yeah, because it's a um, hangout on air, you are just watching a streamed um, broadcast of this, so it will be available on YouTube. We've already embedded the link into the um, the DEG site, um, so because you are just streaming it, you don't need to be invited. Just the people who are speaking most are invited to speak. Um, yeah, that's about it. I think. Um Helen went on to ask about, um, or so, someone went on to ask about how many people can you have in a hangout, and I think in education it's 15, um, as opposed to a normal yeah. Gmail account where it's 10. Um, I tried it with a couple of schools talking all at once, and it, and it worked all right, and we had about 11, 11 different students on and a few people around each, each computer, and that worked really, really well. Um, just another one, Helen Prescott mentioned that she bought a Chromecast in New Zealand off Trade Me, so that's... That's pretty interesting and, and good you can get one and trade me. And Helen also asked about um, Google Plus is available for 13 and over. Are there any solutions um, for, for primary? And I think Google Classroom's perhaps moving towards that and they've got a similar interface where you can comment and share and um, not necessarily live chat as you can do that in the documents, but it's a, it's a stream. Um, so that might be their, their gap and filling in that. Um, sort of sharing of learning through there. Mm. Did you have any hey, questions, Tim, Nick, that we need to pick up on? Oh, sorry, Rob. Um, that, that issue of Google Plus for primary age kids is a real nuisance because, um, you know, we, we get our Google Apps for Education domain all up and going and then everyone's happy and, and you can use all the various powerful tools within the course suite but you can't use possibly the most exciting and, and social and, and um, really you know, really empowering tool in Google+. Plus. Um, there has been some talk that I've picked up that it may be changing, um, but I think that um, I'd like to put out to our community that we need to actually put it out there via social media that educators with education domains um, actually do need Google+, Plus activated for um, all age groups, uh, because that will prevent us from, you know, lying about children's ages, I guess, which, you know, that's the only solution at the moment. 
Um, as far as I know, I think it's because um, of some uh, American laws. I think that uh, that restrict yeah. um, social media under uh, over 13s. Is, um, so yeah, but in saying that, it's um, it's really powerful for the teachers. So you can turn it on, off for I, I have it off for the students and on for the teachers, and we use it all the time for um, conversations. We've got our own little uh, hub community, and we're having uh, conversations on there all the time and sharing links and sharing resources. Um, and that's how we keep keep um, in touch during the week um, when we don't often sometimes have those face-to-face -face conversations. So when you're working in a team teaching environment, um, we've found the community um, aspect of Google Plus really handy. So, yep. Um, it might be something we could put on the agenda for a, um, for another um, conversation, but especially around a lot of the web tools, not just within Google, have the 13 plus um, limitation yeah. on them. So it's something that we are, um, you know, new and we are sometimes breaking some ground here, so we're having to think about how that's going to work. Um, you know, if you've got students signing into um, using their, their GAF. Um, username and password and signing into uh, anything outside of the GAF domain using their password, they are essentially, um, uh, you know, handing over their information um, and they're under 13. So, it's the, you know, with some of the, the tools there are really easy workarounds for that and ways that you can set them up, but it is something that everybody needs to be um, conscious of and thinking about and having conversations about um, in their school. And I, um, when we're, I've been over to Sydney and been to the Google offices, mentioned that to a few of the people there that that's kind of what we would like. So, yeah, we have been. <coughs> there's lots of people who feel the same way. I think they're probably getting sick of the educators hassling them. They're going to <laughs> give up soon and give it to us, surely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any other questions, Tim or Nick, that needed to be answered? Yeah, can you hear me? I was having sound problems yeah. earlier. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, Steve was asking if GAG ends, uh, GGNZ grows, is there a chance of a GTA being held in NZ in the future? One of you wants to answer <laughs> that, although I think I know what the answer will be. Yeah. I guess... We can um, only... I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. With the um, GTA, they have it at Google office, and we've only got one in Auckland, which is quite small from what I understand. Fiona, you'd probably be able to answer that one a bit better. Um, I, I think probably one of the exciting um, aspects of going to the Google Teacher Academy is actually going to Google, one of Google's offices. Um, and, you know, the Sydney one is... is um, a great place to go and visit. There's you know, lots of um, set, the setup there is um, fairly similar, though on a smaller scale, to the Googleplex. But if you've seen the internship, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and you know, it's uh, you know, it would be great to have one in New Zealand. But I think having that opportunity here yeah, to visit a Google office is uh, or a Google HQ in a country is is, is lots of fun and very exciting. Um, but hopefully, too, with with the community group set up now, too, we'll, we will be able to maybe look at you know offering similar types of experiences here. Mm. Perhaps not exactly the same, but yeah. yeah. Mm. Maybe not with um, such good food. Good food. Yeah. No, but that can be yeah. that can be quite lethal, actually. <laughs> <laughs> But one also too, I reckon one, too, great, I reckon one of the great um, things um, about the, the Google Teacher Academy or, or having to go to Sydney is that A, it's probably cheaper to fly if you're not flying from Auckland, but B, you're, you're, you're meeting educators from all over the world too and that's certainly one of the great things. We're lucky that it is in Sydney and not in Perth. Mm -hmm. Were there any other questions, Nick? Um, yeah, I've got uh, a question tr question from Yair about actually starting up a GEG group. Because um, they're looking at doing one in Israel. I think probably, Amy, you'd be the best person to answer that one. Um, so I guess oh, if, you wanna, if you want to start up a GEG group in another country, if you go to the uh, GEG 
Google um, Educator Group worldwide website. They've got links there um, in showing you how to actually um, start up your own um, group. If you want to contact me through the community, then I could probably email you the, the links in and help you out. You need to be nominated um, to start up a community by either a GEG leader or a um, Google certified teacher. All the information's on um, that website, so hopefully that can steer you in the right direction. Anything else, uh, Nick? Okay, don't know if I missed this one. I was off air for a few seconds changing earphones. Um, have we, someone's put, are we going to put up a, a Google Classroom page? <clears throat> what, are, what do you mean by a Google Classroom page? I think they're probably meaning, are we putting something up on our site for Google Classroom? Uh, there are quite a few. Yeah, we can do. There are quite a few YouTube clips and things like that surfacing, and we can kind of um, curate those and put those on the um, GEG community. We could also our next hangout. We could have part of our focus on classroom. Um, yeah, I don't know how you hey, guys. Um, sorry, can I just jump in though? On on Saturday morning, um, I'm part of this hangout with the people that. Um, a, a testing classroom basically and if anyone mm -hmm. in the community has got any feedback about how they've been using it or if it works for them or um, how their students have been feeling about it um, just post it up on the community um, page and I can hopefully bring that up with those guys to give them a bit of feedback about that um, I've been using it with my class for only about two weeks but obviously their, their main market's the US and they're all on school holidays so they've not actually had any um, real-time <laughs> classroom feedback from it I think they're stretching further afield. Yeah. Okay, Amy, think, there was a cheeky... Oh, oh sorry, sorry Nick. Can, can I jump in just quickly? Go right. Um, I think one of the things that um, a lot of people will be asking, or that certainly that I'm hearing, um, but I think that people will be asking soon is what's the difference between the Para Teacher Dashboard and Google Classroom, and which one should I look at or go for? And I think that might be a, an area that people may be interested in for a future, a future hangout. Um, yeah, I'd be interested in hearing that one. And I also read today there's quite a bit of stuff about Doctopus. Andrew Stillman mm -hmm. from the Doctopus creator coming on and saying you know, that Dr. Puss still rocks it more than Classroom does. Um, going back to the Chromecast, I've also looked and JB Hi-Fi in, um, in Australia and Dick Smith's are uh, selling them for about 50 bucks. That's Australian, so if anyone's heading out that way, maybe pick your Chromecast up there. Um, another question, Amy, how much is Steve Moldy's silence worth? I'm not even going to attempt to answer that, <laughs> Moldy. Oh, I would pay for that. <laughs> what is that in relation to? <laughs> um, I just, I just noticed a question from Chris um, Dylan about sharing Circle Smart tools need only be created once. Um, I'm actually not quite sure. Does anyone know what he means by that? I think Chris wanted you to share, Chris wanted to share, to share an example that came up on your on your on your on your, um, on your community, page. Um, community page. Um. Oh, the okay. I think he wanted you to share that to the. Oh, okay. Um, maybe Chris, if you're still listening, if that's what you wanted, maybe just um clarify in in the community again after the hangout, and I can do something there. And also, I noticed that I think um, Jared posted um, on the, in the uh, comments as well that he's got Chromecast was on Fish Pond. I can't find that now. Um, and another thing I noticed was someone asked about setting <laughs> Google Plus again, but setting it up within a primary GAF domain. And oh, can't you get? Can't you set up G Plus for primary within your domain? 
Yes, you can, but if you set it up for your students who are under 13, they will be turfed out of their Google account. So you need to talk yep. to whoever's your GAF administrator, yep. and you set up sub-organisations and an organisation for students, an organisation for teachers, and then you can turn it on and off different um, um, utilities like Google+. Plus. Um, as soon as they, they try to get into it under 13, they will be um, turfed out of their account. And the only the only yeah, way they can pay is to pay twenty five US cents, I believe. Um, um, and, by the, um, and by the yeah, you can you can, you can do it. There is a little I can I can share that actually in the Google Plus. There's a in the community there is a little procedure you can go through to get back on again. But you know that's not too not too hard. I don't think it costs anything. Pretty sure it doesn't. You might prove me wrong, though. Things change so quickly. Oh, I just oh, went through that experience. I just went through that experience. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I believe you. Um, the thing is, I know that you know that. You see, I'm looking at some of the questions here too around the frustration not being able to use Google Plus. Um, there have to be some huge changes to it, but to be quite honest with you, I don't know whether I would want to be responsible for children under 13 in Google Plus myself, even as a school. So there would have to be some major changes to it. So I think it, looking at the opportunities to, I mean, I'm using it with students over 13, um, and that's just enough for me. Um, <laughs> um, I think with the classroom, there, you know, I could see the possibility of, of um, of using the the features of being able to have that collaborative ongoing conversation um, and being able to add content in. Um, if you're using a parateacher dashboard though at the moment, I probably would say that you'll find that everything um, that you're doing there is, is, is probably um, working quite well for you and that there'd have to be some maybe more developments in classroom for it to be doing some of the um, the functionality of Hapara, especially around visibility. But that's another conversation we can have. Thank you. Awesome. Anything else, Tim? I see um, Nick's just ejected himself. <laughs> yeah, I saw that he got ejected. I didn't know what he did. The bouncers weren't happy with the. <laughs> 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 um, no, there's a couple of there's a few comments um, give me a bit of a hard time about actually changing my shirt for once, and also my um, Google Plus profile looking like an advert for Survivor. So, um, yeah, thanks. Okay, so we're going to call it a night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I guess, um, so I guess um, for everyone listening, for everyone listening and part of our first event, our first event um, we've, got um, we've got lots of events lots in the pipeline, both in person and virtually, and we'd love for you to organise events and get in contact with us and really feedback what what you would like from this community as well. So um, if everyone wants to say good night, we will see you all again soon. So good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. And if you guys stick around, we'll finish up. Thanks. Right. right. Good night. Good night.